Time to get started building our automata. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to build your automata frame. This is just one of many examples. Yours may vary. So to get started, you're going to need a sheet of cardboard for your frame. You're going to need a hot glue gun or a roll of tape or both. I recommend at least having a hot glue gun if you can, but you can do it all with tape. It just won't be as stable. You're going to need four corner pieces for uh, stabilizing the triangle. You're going to need something sharp to poke a hole through the sides with. So I have a compass here. I don't recommend using a knife. Uh, it's just a little bit overkill. Find something else with a point. You're going to want uh, a marker or a pencil. And you will also need a ruler. And you'll need the rod that goes to the center, your chopstick. And uh, the wheels that you attach to the chopstick for your action. Okay, so uh, let's get started. My piece of cardboard is 4 inches wide by 24 inches long. So I can make a box that is square, that is 6 inches tall and 6 inches uh, wide. Or you can make a rectangle that's 8 inches wide and 3 inches tall. Uh, you can do quite a, quite a few different things, but you need to make sure the left side and the right side are the same height and the top and the bottom are the same length uh, so that uh, your box isn't crooked. I'm going to make mine a square, so to get started, I'm going to flip this over and mark on the what I want to be the inside of my box, and I'm going to use my Sharpie. Now, if you don't have a Sharpie, you can use a pencil, that's fine, but it'll be easier for you to see it on my screen with a Sharpie except for the parts like this where it's over something black. So I'm going to measure six inches from the left to the right and put marks both at the top and the bottom. I'm going to slide my ruler over and I'm going to make another mark six inches over at the top and the bottom. And I'm going to continue this all the way down till the end. All right, now I'm going to see, I don't need to mark anything here, but I'm going to see if I'm right at six. I'm about five and seven eighths and five and 13 sixteenths. So um, I'm not quite a full six inches here on this last piece. So it'll be slightly crooked when I put my uh, box together, but um, it won't make that big of a deal. So I'm going to take a rigid piece of um, wood or just something with a hard edge on it. You can use your ruler for this if you want, but I'd recommend having something a little bit more rigid like this. And what I'm going to do is hold it down in place, lined up with those six inch marks that I made, and then I'm just going to fold a piece over and you'll see you have a nice straight hinge or bend. So I'm going to line up those six inch marks here now and bend it. This wood just really helps make a straight bend. I highly do not recommend trying to bend this um, without something to guide the bend. If you don't have something rigid, you can bend it on the edge of the table. If you line up those marks on the edge of the table and then you bend it that way, you can do that as well. Okay, so. Now you can see I have my box. I want the brown to be on the outside. What I need to do is I need to put glue here on this edge to join these together. It's really important you put glue on there. Otherwise it's going to fall apart on you. So put a nice bead of glue or tape. You know, put, put a decent amount of tape on it. Okay. And you're just going to hold those in place until it cools just like that all right and then once this cools what you're going to do next is you're going to put on the triangle pieces that help support this from collapsing and i'm not sure if this glue is dry enough yet or uh, cool enough yet so i'm just going to grab a piece of tape and throw it on there for the sake of saving some time in this video so I'll just leave that tape on there to hold it in place for now. 
Uh, then it comes to the triangles. Uh, the triangles, when you glue them on, um, you put them in just like that. So I'm going to put hot glue on the edges and then hold it in place. If you are working on your kitchen table putting this together, I would highly recommend you put something down underneath what you're, where you're working so that you don't get any hot glue on your mom's nice tablecloth or your dad's nice table or whatever you're at doing this. You know, so I got hot glue on that piece of cardboard, both on the top and on the left side there. And I'm just holding it in place until it cools enough that I can let go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some more hot glue on another piece of cardboard for the other side. go all right there's that put on another triangle here there's all sorts of different ways you can put these triangles on if you're not if you don't have them in the exact orientation and place that I have them on here and you realize it, don't rip them off if they're already dried. They'll probably be fine wherever you put them. Um, I'm going to put all mine in the front. Um, I've done it different ways where I've put um, two in the same corner, one on the front of the automata, one on the back of the automata. Uh, it's just this side I decided to put them all in the front of the automata. And just keep holding those in place until they dry. All right, and then I'm going to put this last triangle in as well. there we go so now my box should be very sturdy once the glue hardens it gluten's not hardened yet but uh, the next thing I'll need to do is I'll need to lay out where uh, to put the holes in the side uh, for the chopstick or the center rod to go through whatever you're using uh, for your center rod so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to use it as a straight edge to find where the center is. So I'm going to line up my ruler with opposite corners on the sides. And I'm just going to make a mark in the middle. There we go. So there's my mark in that side. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. side there we go all right so then next what I need to do is I need to take something with a sharp point and poke it through for my chopstick now don't put your hand underneath it to support it and poke it through like that uh, that could be bad you could shove it right through your hand I also don't recommend using like a steak knife or an exacto knife um, I just try to find something pointed you can use a pen even um, you can use all sorts of different pointed things. You could probably get away with using uh, um, a pencil. Uh, just be careful. Um, don't poke yourself. You know, don't put your fingers under it like I just did the last time. That was a bad example. <laughs> Hold it on the outsides. Okay, so then you just need to get it big enough for the chopstick uh, to fit through.
and you probably want to support it underneath make sure that it's it's loose enough that you'll be able to spin the chopstick and you can hold it where the chopstick's gonna poke through because the chopstick isn't going to cut you There we go. All right, so now we got the rod going through the center. Okay. And then uh, for these, these discs that we have here, um, you can also slide those through the chopstick. So you can just pull the chopstick back out. Slide the chopstick through the center if that's the hole you're going to use. Or slide the chopstick through the off center hole if that's the one that you're going to use. Okay. Now they may feel nice and tight right now, um, but as soon as you move them a couple of times, they're going to get loose. So you will need to hot glue those in place. I don't, however, recommend hot gluing them in place until you're absolutely dead positive certain that that is where they're going to be and they will never need to move again. Because if you do hot glue them in place and you do need to move them, you will need to tear them off and put new ones on. Um, so that would be a thing you would do at the very end when you're pretty much finished. Now that we have the circles in there to cause our action to happen, uh, we need to have holes in the top for the uh, rods that go through uh, that cause the action to move from the bottom uh, to the top to whatever our actions are going to be up there. So if you're going to have a real simple action where you simply have a stick coming up and it goes up and down or in and out of the uh, automata frame, um, it's going to be really simple. If you have something where the uh, action is going to cause the stick to go left and right in there, uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult or forwards and backwards, it could be a little bit more difficult. On mine, for example, here, you'll see that my automata has a hole that goes right here and it has a hole that goes right here and you can see I braced this one with a straw that way it doesn't uh, move side to side um, it gives it a little bit of stability that may be something you would you would like to do you can also see that I glued my fisherman into my box you can see I had a little tab that I put on the bottom of his foot um, that I then glued to the underside of the frame so that he wouldn't come loose. Maybe something you want to look at. I'm going to show you um, how to do a real simple uh, hole um, spaced out in the centers. That may or may not work for you. If yours is real simple and it doesn't really matter where exactly they go, then that will work for you. If you have one action and it goes right through the center, well then, perfect. Um, this this will also be for you so if you have one action and it's going right through the center what you're going to do is put a ruler on one corner and then the same on the other corner and we're just again going to find the center of the box now if you have one action and you want it to be in the center boom there you go that's where the hole goes you do the same thing i did with the compass earlier and you poke it through if you have two actions and you want them to be equally spaced out what you can do then is you can measure over from the left side three inches because remember our sides are six do the same thing at the bottom okay then what you're going to do is line up the corner line up at the mark where the mark meets the edge draw your X do the same thing here where the mark meets the edge line it up with the corner Okay, do the same thing here. And the same thing here. All right, so there, now that now I have two holes that are perfectly spaced out, or two marks for holes that are perfectly spaced out, um, you can do that if that's what works for you. I don't know, everybody's automata is different, so this might not work for you, so you're gonna have to think about it. Uh, and decide if that's what you want to do. Um, it may be that your holes need to be, you need to measure back um, for whatever reason, like I did. Mine are not perfectly centered, um, like I showed you there. And then the last little bit uh, thing that um, 
I'm going to show you is um, you have uh, this little circle here. What you can do with that is you can put it on the end like this so you don't accidentally pull your um, rod out and then your tomato falls apart. Uh, you can put a dab of hot glue on that at the very end when you're absolutely certain that you don't need it to move anymore. Um, but that again would be one of the very last things you would do uh, just like gluing these in would be one of the very last things you would do. Oh, and I did say I'd show you how to do the straws. Um, so what you can do with these straws is uh, can cut a section of a, a straw off with a pair of scissors. Okay, then you can take a uh, pointy object. Here I have a Forstner or a spade bit. Poke a hole through wherever you want that to go. Okay, wind it in and out with something else. Again, be very careful that you don't stick your fingers underneath of your sharp object. Okay. And then you can just insert this straw then into the hole once it's the correct size. Almost fit. I'm going to make it just a tad bit bigger. Okay. And then now that straw is in there nice and tight, you can put hot glue in that hole and then run the straw through there. Just be careful. If you put hot glue directly on this straw, if you have a high temp hot glue gun, you're probably going to melt the straw. So uh, your best bet would just to be put the straw and put the hot glue around the hole um, and then uh, stick this through. Just be careful that you don't get any hot glue inside of the straw. Um, so however you want to do that. Straws are cheap, so if you mess it up, hey, you just cut yourself a new piece. So that's how you build your automata frame. Good luck.